So we're hiking up here today. We're way gone. And we're in the middle of no man's land and I find this area that's blow down. And I thought, oh, it looks good. I'm gonna come up here. And we're hiking all around it. We've been walking for a good two and a half hours. Now check this crazy thing out. You will not believe this. You just stay there, man. Stay back. Look at that, would ya? It goes forever down there. And uh, I'm like, we're coming by here and I see this little ridge right here that Mon's walking on and I think, what in the world? And uh, it's a mine shaft, open. Can you believe it? So we'll go down here and put my camera in the holder. Karu, you come by me. I'll just walk down to the camera. I don't like to walk with the camera, I understand it. Oh, good. Karu, come boy. And uh, unbelievable that that's there. Can you believe that I'd stumble upon that son of a gun? What are the odds of that? I mean, who, who would do that? Karu? Come over here, boy. Come by me. Come by me, Karoo. Oh, there's my boys. Come. Come. Now, I just clipped this on before I started filming so that if he came up and wanted to walk by that hole, I could control him. Mon, I can control our uh, Karoos. Just as good as Mon, but uh, Mon, you come on this side so they can see Karoo. Come over here, boy. Come around here. Come come over here, Mon. Just come here. Come around here. Come over here. Mon, just come around here. Come over here, boy. Come. Come up here, Mon. Come right up here. Come up. Let him see Karoo too. There. Now we can see both you guys. Good. So I got two of the best uh, Norwegian elk hounds in the world with me today. We're uh, doing a nice hike, but we're scouting for wood. I, I knew this blowdown was here. And uh, I thought, well, well, we'll walk. It's a long haul. We, come, we hike way, way over there. But way back down the hill, I can park. And so we drove quite a ways from the yard and parked way over there, about two hours back. And there is an old logging trail, and it runs down below us. And it comes up, and it tees off, and it goes up behind. And um, I thought, well, I was standing down there looking up here, and I thought, well, I want to come up here and see how the, what the situation is for me to roll them. Because uh, there's some killer trees up here, really nice, and I would roll them down. So then I stumbled onto this stupid mine thing. I can't believe that's left open. That's just, uh, that's so bizarre. So uh, next time I come, I'll bring some red, uh, Flags. I'll get some from my boy and I'll flag that stupid thing. If you were in winter, they get, we get a lot of snow here. I'm not saying that it would drift over top that hole, but uh, it sure might cover it almost and a dog could easily run in there. So I will not be hiking this zone in the winter or summer for that matter. Unless I got my skilled mountain dogs that I know explicitly, but anybody that ranges a far distance from me and in a hurry, can you imagine if they were scooting over that hill after a deer or a moose or a bear and just went flying over that thing and kaboom, a thousand feet down. Unbelievable, really. So that's the BC mining industry's history for you. 
That's why nobody likes the BC mining history. S stupid stuff like that. They could have dropped 10 trees over that in a heartbeat. They're everywhere here. They could have just fallen them right over top of that and plugged that hole up in two seconds flat. They've logged since that mine was in here. They've been here logging. And morons with skitters could have hawked about 10 trees in that hole. Would have taken nothing. It's just uh, lazy. No good for nothing bums. And it's brutal for me to cover it now because I'd have to manhandle them over it. But I can mark it, so I will mark it. But nothing I can do about covering it, but I can sure as heck uh, mark it. And it might not help a dog, but potentially. But uh, just about anything on a run would fall in that hole. So these two boys are exceptional, let me tell you. Um, I don't think you'll ever see two dogs more handler focused, almost, almost to the point of being in competition to see who's the most focused. Not that they're in competition, but they, they are so focused that uh, um, I'll, I probably believe we'll never be able to explain the, the amazing thing it is to hike with guys like this. And Carew's just a little guy. He's just a just a young pup. He's only five months. I got him from Finland. Kari is the breeder of this magnificent dog over in Finland. And wow, is he a good dog. This is a, unbelievable. He's my new stud dog. He's going to work with Mon. So Mon will breed and I'll hold back females for Karu. Karu will breed another female and I'll hold back females for Mon. And these guys will go back and forth like that. And I'll take some of my other males and do the same thing, produce produce uh, females for these two. And we'll focus uh, a lot of our program on these two boys right here. It's, uh, there's no, no dogs like this in the world. It's so profound. We can hike absolute wilderness. Now, heavy... Uh, Heavy brambles and brush right now. All the it, it's very very tough on clothing getting through here, and I'm a little worried up on these high open ridges here. The hunters can see us, and so I'm trying to make these boys visible. And same with me, I don't want to get shot either. But uh, lots of hunters shoot first, ask questions later. Not not the good ones. But every year you read about it, some hunter shoots somebody's dog. Un unbelievable, real. And so uh, you you watch that. Don't let some hunter shoot your dog. I I would bury him right in that hole if he did, though. Without question, he would never know. And <laughs> nobody would ever find that. I wouldn't mark it then. <laughs> but they couldn't see down it anyway so far. So yeah. But I know exactly where to bring them guys that take a crack at us. They'll be sitting right in that hole, Carew. We'll just take his fancy new gun home, dump his truck over the cliff, and that's that. Yeah, wouldn't hesitate two seconds take a shot at us. I'd hunt him down. So, yeah. But, yeah, these boys are good. Oh, man, nice to hike with. We found some seriously good wood. It's just hard to believe how much. So I'll have enough firewood. I just got to get it in. Of course, Carew helped me the other day. He found me a world-class tree. And it was a big one. So all I could get in the truck. And so I got it home. I burnt some last night. It's dry as a bone. Had a really nice fire. Had hot chocolate and fire. It was really good. It was cold last night. It was cold this morning when we left. Warming up now. But uh, I thought it might rain, but it's not going to. I think we'll, we'll miss it today, but it's cold out. And so we're, uh, we're high. I'm, I'm glad to be working because uh, we, we were chilled. But she's warming up good now. And uh, so we have, we have a litter coming from uh, Mon's sister Luna. 
and she'll be in fairly soon. I got a lot of people been waiting a long time for that. And Mon himself has a litter with Silver Nova coming. So Silver Nova's hiding her patties now and keeping extras and I had Mon bunking out with her but uh, she's just taking his food too so I brought him out. Cause she's, she's obviously thinking she's bred so I can't see a belly yet but big belly on Luna. And Anya, she pretty well kills Leaf if he comes near her when, he, when she's eating, so I'm pretty sure she thinks she's bred too. I got her bunking out with him for a little while in the back pen. And uh, so he likes to come around females when they're eating. He's not polite like Mon. And uh, so uh, Anya just, well, she don't mind taking long runs at males if they come near her food. And she can catch them too, boy. And so he has to hustle fast. <laughs> but it's good training for Leaf. He's going to quit doing that. <laughs> All you catches a boy, he, he'll pay. <laughs> She's way bigger than him. <laughs> but he's fast. So he's a good boy, that Leaf. So Tuva is cycling right now, which is Mon's aunt. That's Tecla's full, si uh, full sibling sister. And Mon's dad... I've got him hanging with Luna. Now, all the other males are, are right frantic. Leaf, Tico, Ark, Mon, even Karu and Paso, thinking their stud dogs are ready. They can smell that. But I'm only letting Dakota have a go in this very early stages. And if he can get her to stand in the very early stages and hook up, fantastic. But if she's a mover and a squirming around and he can't get a hook up, then uh, we'll uh, we'll put her in with Leaf. Leaf is uh, is right right ready to go. So as on you don't catch him and hurt him, <laughs> she can't catch him. She won't hurt him. She just likes to scare the crap out of him. But uh, yeah, he'll be good. Uh, so hopefully. I would really love it if I could get uh, Dakota. Dakota is Mon's dad, right? So I would have little Mons again, almost identical, because Tekla and Tuva are twins, so they're, the genetics are identical. So I'd have little Mon babies, and uh, that would be very, very unique. I would, I would really think that's fantastic. So uh, I am going to see how that goes. Now, Dakota's 13, so... Maybe not, right? But uh, I'm sure not against giving him a chance. The old boy's been such a rock, that guy. Wow. I mean, I have. He's done more for the Canadian elk hounds than any other don, dog in existence. These two boys will do a tremendous amount, but without Dakota, these boys wouldn't be here. Hey, buddy. Now, Dakota's got no bearing on Karoo other than Dakota's planted everything in place for us to have a great kennel and an opportunity to bring that, to have the females that Karoo will work with. Letta, for example, is a great granddaughter of Dakota. So, very, very cool. Letta is one of the very best females there is. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty fun. We're having a fun day, boy. I like working with these two boys. I got lots of uh, work to do today. I got some pups to run. I've got some jam tons to run. I'm, I may end up uh, doing four hikes today, so I'll be dead tired by by come seven o'clock. But that's okay. That's the life of a dog breeder, and especially a remote terrain dog handler dog breeder. <laughs> Isn't that right, boys? But that's in but good times I can with boys like this. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a it's a phenomenal thing to run the males, right? Um, lots of people uh, have males that they can't run together. But these two boys, they would run their whole lives together. So uh, they're they're pals, they're buddies. So yeah, very very good very very nice to do this I just talked to Dan Valla he's got two brothers down in Wyoming 
Billy and Bay, and they're doing great. I got a picture this morning from from Ian um, on Strider. What a rock star that boy is! And uh, we've we've just had nothing but uh, photos. Her saw, saw a great photo of her out on the island, way up to high Greg to the top, looking out over the ocean. Unbelievable. So yeah, very cool. All the photos we're getting. Kai. Um, Gabrielle sent me a whole bunch of photos of Kai. That's Mon's uh, brother's brother's name is Loki, and he sired a uh, litter with Vida, and Vida is Mon's half sister too. So um, Kai is one of those pups, and uh, Gabrielle is uh, doing a world class job. And Gabrielle and and um, Kai get to visit a lot with Loki. <laughs> Because Seb and Carson are right there, they're friends. Uh, Carson and uh, Gabrielle are friends, so the the Loki gets to visit with his daughter, which is really really cool. So yeah, we're we're getting lots of photos. I had a really nice set come in from Loki, one of the very first the the a male from the very first litter we raised. He's a exceptional old boy, really doing good. So, yeah, we're, and uh, you've got lots more to share. I'm going to put a nice update together starting now because uh, the, the nights are shorter and I can uh, do a little bit of computer time. I was doing some work in the kennel, getting it ready for the new uh, litter to come, but I'm caught up. So, yeah, if you guys are looking for dogs and you want world-class hiking dogs, we got a long list of people waiting, but... We got letters coming by it, and Tuva and Phoenix and Kai and Kalia and Lada, all of them. There'd be some incredible dogs. And these are some of the stud dogs that we'll be using. Leaf and Tico's there. And we've got others. So yeah. Wow boys, I'm I'm hungry. So I'm gonna have my lunch. I brought a little snack for myself because I knew I'd get hungry. <clears throat> That's good, boys. Let me uh, let me close this down. Awesome video, you guys. You guys just hang on. Just hang on, boys. Good job, boys. Good video.